So we're at 100% battery, producing a nice bit of power. What I don't understand is exporting to the grid. So I'm gonna have a quick look to see if the iBoost is on at all. It doesn't appear to be. Uh -huh. As you can see, it looks like we've got a bit of an error here. Lost signal. Okay. Press the button on the screen. Heating from solar, 0 0.00 kilowatt hours. Now it started. How odd. I wonder what it'll do. That's very strange, isn't it? That it's almost by, well, it is. It's been sat like that all day, because I think we're about three o'clock. Um, I come along. I haven't pressed anything. By the way, all I did was press a button, which wakes a screen up. And then it's suddenly gone, oh yeah, no, actually, yeah, I can, I can put some power in. How odd. Very strange, this eye boost. So it looks like it's ramping up to, let me just double check now the, see what Fox system is saying the house is now using, compare it to what I just put up a second ago. Do, do, do. So with that, I'm now going to connect up the car to the Zappy. And let's see if it makes the iBoost go nuts. Uh, so we've got an Eco Plus Plus. Eco Plus Plus. There she is. Let's plug that in. Wing for surplus. It says it's exporting a kilowatt to the grid. It's saying that there's surplus. going to start in a second now it says waiting for surplus again so I guess it's been taken up by the iBoost perhaps so it did that ran down and stopped okay not sure hmm that's flashing away it's not that keen on it Knowing this Zoe, it'll time out before it even gets anywhere with it. So it says ongoing checks. It doesn't like sitting in that for any length of time. So I just need to double check. Waiting for surplus. Hmm. Okay. Okay, it's saying surplus. Waiting for EV. It's counting back down again. I think it does a timer because it doesn't want to keep clicking in and out. RCD, charging. Okay. I can hear the car charging. It's pulling four and a half from the grid, three and a half, that should level down, I think. It's now outputting. Hmm. Okay, I think that's probably my lack of understanding here, because that's going to be pulling from the battery at 5.4. Well, five, definitely. Uh, I didn't think it pulled from the battery on Eco Plus Plus, though. Week or plus. Hmm, interesting. So that'll definitely be pulling from the battery. It's not pulling anything from the grid, which is good. But I thought the next one down made it pull from the battery, and this one was solar only, excess solar. Perhaps someone could comment below and tell me that that's not the case. Or I've got it wrong, one of the two. Theoretically, it shouldn't be pulling anything now because there is no surplus. But it is, it's pulling 900 watts almost. Don't know, not a clue. Yeah, almost a kilowatt. Just went over a kilowatt a second ago, but by the time I got the camera working, um, it dropped back down again. But yeah, strange. Odd, because there isn't any excess. Let's check what Fox system is saying again now. The eye boost is off, and just before the camera came on, this was red again. So do I dare press this? Hmm, let's do it. So, heating by solar, 0, 0.00. Hmm. 
So I think that's stopped heating by solar now, which is good. That's not a bad thing because there's no overage because it's removing it from the battery charging my car. But then I thought, <laughs> Eco Plus Plus as I'm calling it, with the two leaves, Eco Plus and two leaves, I thought that was only supposed to heat off the overage. So excess. Hmm. Do -do -do. Going back out here again. Have a quick look what we got going on. Uh, okay, that's... No, it hasn't dialed down. I thought it dialed down, not by a lot. 4.8, so it's still pulling that amount. So it's not coming from the grid, but it is coming from the battery. Really, I only want excess solar to be used to charge the car, so I might just kill the charge because I only want excess, really, to come from it. So I don't want to be charging this from the battery, thereby reducing the battery. So tonight, when the sun goes down, I'll have much less battery than I would have had before. I don't want to be stealing like five kilowatt hours from this, from the battery. <laughs> I want the battery to stay at 100% ready for nightfall. Hmm. Confused.com. It is confusing. I'm not really sure what else to say about it, really. If you, again, if you just want to get this stuff installed and just for it to work, it's like, not really any chance, not with what I've got anyway. Um, you're constantly thinking and scratching your head going, I don't get that. So I was monitoring away from home. Uh, sun's been shining since nine o'clock this morning. I've been away for that entire time, got back at three o'clock. But when I kept logging in, I was like, for goodness sake, it's exporting 1.5 kilowatts to the grid um, because the battery's got to 100%. Uh, but it's not it's not diverting it to through the iBoost. Then you get rushed back home to find out the iBoost is aired out, but just pressing the boost button, which just turns the screen on. So first press when the screen is off does nothing, just to be clear about that. It then went, oh, I, I'm working now. And it started then taking it from that overage by 800 watts. So you're thinking, but it should have done that automatically. So we should have had hot water for the last five hours, well, water being heated for the last five hours, but it hasn't done that. So there's that oddity about the whole thing. Now I've got a group of people that say the iBoost is the best thing ever. And I've got a group of people that are saying, no, you just need to get yourself an Eddie because the iBoost is absolutely terrible. So I've got not really sure what to think of that. Um, haven't had anyone saying the Eddie's terrible, though. So maybe that might be the route to go. Trouble is, you're never going to get your money back. If you're doing it for economy reasons, you're not going to get your money back because the iBoost is whatever it is, 600 quid. The Eddie's 800 quid or something. So what do I do with that? Just sell it off secondhand and even though it's brand new. Uh, don't know. So let's just park that aside. Then we got the Zappy, which I thought the mode I'm in, but I could be completely wrong. But the level of understanding you need to have for these systems just to use them is kind of what I'm flagging up here. I thought on that it would only take excess solar generation that would otherwise be exported to the grid. So as far as I know, that is what it's supposed to do. But as we've just seen, it's kind of the first day, and I get to test this more through summer when we actually have a thing called sun. Um, it doesn't seem to do that at all. It just pulls it from well, it definitely doesn't do it. The battery's now at 96%, so I've lost 4% of the battery, and that's gone into the car. Don't want that. I don't want that. I just want it that battery to remain full and for it to divert into my car. It's not doing it. It's taking 5 kilowatts from the battery moment by moment, so... Uh, comment below about Zappy. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to move along and describe another issue. Right, the other issue is that I keep getting asked, what is your total daily yield from the solar? Now, you would think, I would have thought, <laughs> that the if you had a whole list of figures to choose from, the only, re the, the most important one would be the solar that I've just had installed on my roof. How much did that produce yesterday? How much did it produce today so far? Can you see that through the Fox system? You cannot. You can if you haven't got a house battery. If you've got a house battery, which I'm calling it a house battery, but a battery for your house, you cannot. It screws up with the figures. So if some people keep asking me, what you know, what's it producing? I don't have no, I haven't got a clue. Don't know. It's producing something, I think. 
Now, I bought... Well, it definitely is producing something because it charges the batteries today. So, in, where I'm settled at the moment is that the system does appear to be working in terms of it's gathering sun and putting it into the house battery. There's little idro... idro what are they called? Idrosyncrasies? However you pronounce that word. Between the iBoost, which sometimes, even though it's not flashing red for a loss of connection, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do and nicks it from the battery at three kilowatts and just runs constantly and just drains the battery down. I would assume this has gone wrong because it says heating by solar, but it's dark outside. That happens every now and again. So there's always comments about the CT camp, which is, you know, it, it, it does happen that the installer's put them the wrong way around. That isn't the case because it, it does occasionally work. Uh, well, it works more than it doesn't work. It's just occasionally it just completely drains your battery out and you've got no battery. So it's happened about three or four times. It just wipes the whole lot out. So your whole stuff you've tried to harvest is gone. It's like someone's come in and raided your house. And you're like, oh no, you get back and you haven't got any of it. It's like, oh, for goodness sake. All we have got is very, very hot water. Brilliant. Um, so that's slightly frustrating. Um, and then we've got the thing with the Zappy as well. So there's those two things. But in terms of reporting back yield... No idea. So I then thought, well, out what on earth? This is ridiculous. I can't be bothered with this, but how can you get around that? So you go onto the forums, how can you get around it? You can buy Home Assistant, which is open source software. And, but then you need a machine to run that. So we've already been through that in previous videos, as in just lightly touched on it. But, so, so far I've gone and spent 160 quid on a computer, which has got Home Assistant pre-installed. Uh, I've then bought a network switch because there wasn't enough network ports. And then, by the way, I've now got issues with actually connecting to directly. My computer will no longer connect to it, but my mobile phone through there, the app on the same network will. So there's some issue there, but I don't know what that is. Let's leave that for another time. When I can actually connect to it, it doesn't give you accurate data. So it shows you, and you've got these lovely dashboards. Um, got notifications popping up. You've got these lovely dashboards that everyone shows off, and they're absolutely amazing. But, oh, ice cream van. It's only about eight degrees. They're all very nice and all that, but you actually then need to do something completely... Well, it's out of my qualifications. You then need to go hardwire it by splitting a Cat5 cable down, splicing it and taking connections one and four or something, and then taking the cable off from the inverter and then plug it in there. That makes be really simple for some people, but I don't really fancy taking out the wiring of what I've got there and then messing around with it and making sure I plug it in. Then there's an added complication that I've got a, a master inverter and a slave inverter. Um, do they both need to be wired up? Should it, then there's different firmware versions within Home Assistant that now no longer allows a hard wiring connection, depending on what type of version you're running, and all these sort of complications that I haven't got a clue about. Uh, it would take me probably months to try and learn it. And I genuinely don't want to do that. I just want to know what is the yield from my solar. Now, there's some calculation that you can use by deducting and adding and multiplying and then putting a factor of so-and-so to try and make out more or less get a figure of what you're producing. What I'd like to have is a to know what my daily yield is for my solar. So you know, I don't know if Fox do any... don't know if they have any aftercare at all or care. But, for instance, if they themselves had installed my system, which is all Fox hardware apart from the iBoost, and the zappy if they'd have done this install i would have sat down at the end of the day and gone right so what have i produced today then guys and they'd have gone oh i don't know oh right how, how do we find out what it's actually producing so i can work out the maths to work out whether how how, how much payback i'm getting for my investment you can't because you've got a you've got a battery installed with yours right okay <clears throat> or they might have said what you need to do is go and buy a micro pc plug that in acts as a server for home assistant and then what you can do is hardwire no you can't hardwire in route anymore but you mod bus it or something like that i have no idea what that means um it's a lack of understanding but i, I don't really want to go through that whole it, it it does seem as though i'm gonna to have to go that route unless i get someone in to come and do it for me and set it up properly so i can read on a dashboard what i am producing because what i was aiming to do the part of the frustration is i was aiming to be able to put videos together for, for you regularly, like the end of the week, and go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, tell you what I produced, and then say, look, this is a certain amount of payback. This is great. So far from that, I'm, I'm 
what, a month and a half, two months in almost. I still don't know what I'm producing each day. Not a clue. I have a kind of guess. Sometimes you look at, just log in and see what I'm producing live. I'm like, oh, one and a half, two, two and a half kilowatts. But what does that look like over the course of a day? I don't know. I've got the Home Assistant set up. I've got the dashboard set up, but it's still using the Fox Cloud. Um, and that's not necessarily accurate. There's also a bug, I want to say. It's probably not a technical term for it, but it, it, it logs minus solar. So if I log in, in the morning, it says I've made minus nine kilowatts. So I presume if I want to try and get any reliable data from that, I'd have to take the daily summary of solar generated and take off the minuses and then somehow work out when I've charged the battery or taken from the battery, also take them out of the equation as well. So as it stands, unless I mod bus it, whatever that is, um, and buy some more hardware, and the, the complexities with, if I can hardwire it, the complexities with getting the network cables through from where the router is, is pretty, it's a logistical nightmare really, because it's my, right over the side of the house. So I could get BT to come and move the point of access into the house where the router is, pay for them to come and run another telegraph pole up and then run that along or run it along the side of the house and then put it there. That just seems economically unviable. Not, well, not viable, is it really? Um, so it kind of needs to be wireless. I've brought the ethernet over mains into the garage and then offered a wireless access point for the inverters. So I'm kind of hoping all of this is total nonsense, really. I just need to know what the solar's producing. Off the bat, it's installed. That's where the expense is. Um, but at the moment, sorry, guys, I cannot update you with figures because I'm still at a complete quandary of how to actually get reliable data um, from this system. No idea at the moment, in current, current moment in time. It is working. It is putting some sunlight into the batteries and it is charging up. That's about as basic we can go. How much that is, don't really know. Um, and trying to do a bit of maths working out from the figures I have got could just end up in loads of errors taking place very likely. And so there's no point even going down that route at the moment. Um, so it's very hit and miss, not really sure. So I will try and find a way of, I think it's going to have to be this Modbus thing. Again, I'm not really sure what that is, where I can get some dashboards hopefully working. Hopefully don't know um but yeah I, I did i did write on the forum um and obviously kind of not people's jobs to try and sort this out it should really just work out the box shouldn't it but we got a few uh lovers of the fox stuff we've actually getting a few haters on now we're really struggling with the battery not performing properly the cubes especially that i've got in cold weather because they don't take charges and all this sort of business so loads of people are getting really frustrated with this um but yeah i, I if, if you're thinking of getting the fox stuff installed right now i just encourage you just to hold off um well comment below if you want more information but it genuinely is not this is really difficult system to get any useful information at all if you're thinking of getting an iBoost installed maybe it's to do with how far between the sender unit and the actual thing that it's causing an issue i don't know who knows can't get any sense from anybody um but I'd also hold off on the iBoost, uh, unless a lot of people are going to comment and say, actually, the Eddie's got loads of problems as well. So, just don't know. Um, yeah, the whole thing's a bit of a mess. It reminds me of the issue we've got with infrastructure within the electric car community of charging a car out on the road. It's just a complete nightmare. Everywhere you turn up doesn't work half the time and things like that. It's, the go green agenda is <laughs> it's bull, basically. It's very difficult to have a system. If, if you care about your investment, you're not going to get the answer you want, especially not with the Fox system. Uh, I've got no experience with the other systems. I suspect there's all the other systems out there that I could have chosen. Every single other one gives you a dashboard and says, this is what you produce today. This is your saving. And you go, good, lovely. Not getting that with this Fox system at all. And also not really getting anywhere. Uh, first for solo, of course, hopeless as usual. Um, but yeah, more on that at some other point in time the rubbish was never picked up all the junk left outside the house was never picked up i've still got i had to clear it all up myself um i wrote email after email after email after email uh, and a phone call left a message and uh, never got a call back i've still got someone else's solar panel if you had a solar panel taken down that was a bit smashed up um i've got that at the side of the front of my house by the porch 
what a beautiful thing driving at the front of the house to welcome people in a smashed up solar panel um so that's not been picked up not really sure what to do with that do something with it i suspect solar panels are difficult to get rid of aren't they probably contain some sort of carcinogenic or something and i'll have to take it to the skip um it's pay 100 quid to get rid of it but so we're back on the moaning i am hoping at some point in time in my lifetime that i'll have a system which works as it currently stands no nope. and i'm no further forward so i couldn't really tell you what i what i produced yesterday i don't know no idea sorry <laughs> uh, i'll catch you on the next video oh <laughs> insulated the garage door this is part of it if you want to uh, install batteries in your garage this is where you're going to be at i regret to inform you Tools, be willing to take a bit of pain, and it'll be fine. Oh, there it is. Um, it makes it a little bit more awkward now, to be fair, to actually shut it. But if I do that and then do this, you can see it. So that is now it's not closed completely, but I'm not going to because I get trapped in here otherwise. But it's fully insulated. Uh, I did puncture my fingertip as the drill slipped. So now that really hurts. And there's a fair bit of blood on the thing. But, you know, you work through these things. So if you're installing your Foxy S batteries, make sure you buy a 80 quid roll of insulation, some duct tape, some plasters. Um, have some spare time. Make sure you've got a drill, some screws you're all good you're going to be able to do it <sighs> um yeah i did that to try and make sure that the off-peak charging of the battery worked um as in it kept the temperature of the batteries up it increased it i saw little to no gain from insulating the garage door so i think i will have to make an enclosure of some description to go around the batteries to try and help with the battery management system to actually charge the batteries at a rate that's going to allow them to charge because I keep waking up and they're either on 35, 40% or 60%. It's the most I've seen. 63 is the most I've seen, I think. Um, this, this morning they were on 100% because the temperature outside had risen. But anything below 10 degrees, 8 degrees outside temperature, that's outside, not in the garage. In the garage, you'd be more than that. Hopeless. Um, you might get, say, at the most sort of 60-ish percent charge. So you lose 40% during the day. And that's 60, you need 100% with where we are i need a hundred percent battery in the shorter we're still getting a bit longer now we've got an extra hour and a half a day uh but in those length days so it's sort of sunrise about 7 30 sundown at about quarter to five um five o'clock ish uh that unless it's a hundred percent at the start of the day it's running out by about nine o'clock at night so it screws us over for the end of the day basically so i'll have to build an enclosure of some description or put a heater in the garage to try and heat the batteries up so they'll work but shoddy 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 and massively overcomplicated to try and get what you need out of this fox system so lovely website though looks um very flashy the data sheet which i think they've now removed the data sheet there's a load of buzz around the fact you can't get access to the data sheet anymore because of the, the poor charging um, in cold weather uh, so they removed it which is all very fine apart from the people that just bought it of course wink wink nudge nudge um yeah steer clear of that fox system for now and i'll update as we go through and if i can get uh get an answer to it and start reporting some actual data reliable data and get it working properly um then we can go from there and then maybe it could be the system for you <sighs> nightmare I'll see you guys on the next one. Just one more thing. So it's 3 30 in the afternoon. Uh, system, I'll just double check on the Fox Cloud system. It's producing 450 watts of power in total across a 10 kilowatt system. But it's nicking 
the Zappi is nicking 4.3 kilowatts. So 4,300 from the system. So we've got a deficit of 4,000 watts at the moment. So I'm going to kill this charger, otherwise it's going to deplete the battery uh, down to zero. And of course it's getting dark in the next two hours. So in two hours time, um, it'll be dark. So I'm just going to kill the charge um, now, hopefully. I don't want to boost it. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. Oh dear, dear, dear. Right, let me go into the app and stop it. Okay, that has stopped. And I think we'll uh, leave that like that. We put two and a half kilowatts in anyway from the battery. And yeah. bye.